Welcome back to part two of office-based urine drug screening. In this section, we're going to be discussing the tactical and practical aspects of urine drug testing in your medical practice. I'm frequently asked how many panel tests should uh, be run in the setting of a, a medical practice. And there can be anything from one panel test to I've seen cups with as many as 15 different uh, drugs being tested. And the way I answer this is by saying, well, we're going to need to at least look for the drug being prescribed to make sure that the patient is actually taking it. The most commonly abused uh, drugs in uh, this part of the country continue to be marijuana and cocaine. Oxycodone is certainly a, a problem on the street and uh, the problem with oxycodone is it's not picked up in the routine opioid screen. Uh, buprenorphine is another drug that has made its appearance on the street as more and more physicians get their license to prescribe uh, buprenorphine more and more becomes available uh, to the public and more and more is being diverted. Methadone is another drug that is not picked up by the opiate screen and so must be ordered uh, independently and certainly is a very commonly abused drug in our region. The opiate screen looks specifically at the morphine codeine family and does in fact pick up hydrocodone. Uh, alprazolam is a uh, benzodiazepine that is somewhat unique and that the original benzodiazepine screens did not pick up Xanax, so they changed the uh, immunoassay uh, to pick up Xanax, and unfortunately it dropped off clonopin. Well, clonopin and Xanax are the two most commonly abused uh, benzodiazepines in this area, and uh, so you want to make sure that your point-of-care testing picks up both of those. And then you may have specific uh, drug abuse depending on your uh, region that you'd want to test for such as PCP etc. So an eight panel test is a fairly common uh, drug screen that should look at most of the uh, common drugs of abuse in uh, our region. So when we look at uh, our content thus far uh, we've talked about some background with drug screening and the difference between the office-based screening and what happens in certified labs. So next we're going to talk about the importance of the drug metabolites. It turns out that opiates like codeine get metabolized into morphine and then a very small amount of morphine would get metabolized into hydromorphone. Codeine is also metabolized into hydrocodone. Now, these metabolites are not necessarily important to the point of care testing because frequently these tests will not pick up low levels of hydrocodone or hydromorphone um, as a metabolite of a codeine or a morphine uh, compound. However, if your test gets sent off to a lab, you frequently will see it being positive for codeine, morphine, hydrocodone, and hydromorphone, even though the prescription might be simply for codeine. So what becomes important is understanding that all narcotics are metabolized, and it's very helpful to have a metabolic pathway, such as is demonstrated in this slide, on hand is a reference so that when you're trying to interpret these you can determine whether or not a person might be abusing a uh, non-prescribed medication. So here's a case in point. Uh, your prescription uh, for Vicodin was given to a patient following gallbladder surgery. Then the patient underwent a random test that ended up in confirmation and the confirmation shows that the person has hydrocodone and hydromorphone in their urine. So the question is, do you think that the patient might be abusing dilaudid, hydromorphone, since you prescribed Vicodin, hydrocodone? Well, when we look at the metabolic pathway for hydrocodone, we can see that uh, hydrocodone is metabolized into hydromorphone. So indeed, in this case, 
the patient wasn't abusing dilaudid. It was simply a normal metabolite of hydrocodone. Another case, a chronic pain patient is on methadone and provigil, hands you a urine specimen that is less than 90 degrees and has a specific gravity of less than 1.001 and a creatinine of less than 2. Well, what do you think about this specimen? Well, it doesn't, number one, appear to be normal urine with a specific gravity close to that of water and a creatinine of less than 2. And unless your patient is hypothermic, the temperature should be above 90 degrees Fahrenheit by the time they hand you the specimen. So what you tell the patient is that this specimen is not uh, a valid specimen and will need to have another one collected. And finally, a patient on Adderall for ADHD and Restoril tests positive for amphetamine and Cerax, oxazepam. And are these results compatible with those prescriptions? Well, we do know that Adderall has amphetamine sulfate in it. And so, yes, that uh, explains the amphetamine. But what about the oxazepam? Well, let's look at the metabolism of benzodiazepines. And we can see towards the bottom of our slide, the oxazepam is a metabolite of Restoril. It can be a metabolite of Valium. It can be a metabolite of Librium and Transine. So in this case, uh, the oxazepam is uh, explained uh, by the uh, legitimate prescription. So other practical and tactical considerations with uh, urine uh, drug testing. You have a recovering addict on hydrocodone for a broken ankle who screens positive for marijuana. She reassures you, Doc, there's no way I abuse marijuana. I was at a party last weekend and it was real smoky in the room. So the question is, does passive exposure uh, present a reasonable explanation of either cocaine or marijuana in a person's urine? And the answer is no. That passive uh, exposure cannot uh, uh, yield a positive test because the cutoff level for these drugs are high enough to allow for passive exposure. So what other things? How often should we be drug screening someone who is uh, on a prescription uh, controlled substance? Well, if I'm seeing that patient on a monthly basis or a bi-monthly basis, I'll go ahead and collect a urine each time they come to the office so that they know that they're potentially could be drug tested. But I may not drug test them every time. It all depends upon uh, the patient's uh, other monitoring, uh, whether or not the family monitor says that there's problems, whether or not they seem to be running out of pills early, whether or not they seem to be impaired in other ways. The controverted results we talked about, we'd send those to a confirmation lab. But again, if you start with confirmation testing, I've seen many, many cases where a person sends off a confirmation test for 12 or 13 substances, and the patient's on a hook for a $1,400 lab bill uh, that could have been uh, screened very effectively with a $8 office kit. Positive results mandate a change of care plan. If indeed your patient tests positive for an illicit substance, then there needs to be a change in your plan. That doesn't mean that you stop prescribing. That doesn't mean that you kick the patient out of the practice. It means that something has to change, either more frequent monitoring, sending the patient for a substance use uh, disorder evaluation or treatment, or some other option. But ignoring a positive test uh, really undoes the whole value of, of doing office-based drug screening. And again, the most important part of that uh, monitoring program is that patient-physician uh, relationship. My goal in doing urine drug testing is not to get the patient or catch the patient. My goal is to identify aberrant use so that I can then intervene uh, within a uh, correct plan. So we talked about why are we screening? To protect the patient, to protect the public, and to protect the physician. 
and urine drug testing is just one part of that uh, screening process. Medicaid and Medicare in North Carolina reimburse office-based urine drug testing. This code has to be used, G0434, and the reimbursement rate is about $19.84. These tests cost uh, anywhere between $4 and uh, $8, depending on the number of panels that you uh, acquire. And so this is not a, a great way to, uh, to make a killing, but it does uh, pay for the test itself and uh, a little extra. So that brings us to the end of our office-based uh, drug screening uh, vignette. I hope that uh, you understand uh, why we're screening, the value of doing point-of-care screening in the office, when you might want to send a specimen off for confirmation testing, and some of the practical and tactical considerations of office-based urine drug screening. This uh, video has been uh, brought to you in part as uh, part of the Project Lazarus Initiative and funded and supported by the Kate B. Reynolds Charitable Trust, the North Carolina Rural Health and Community Care, and the North Carolina Foundation for Advanced Health Programs. This program was also sponsored by uh, Mountain AHEC, by the Integrated Chronic Pain Project, funded by CMS, and a special thanks to the Governor's Institute on Substance Abuse for making it possible to uh, do this recording.